What's going on guys, Billy here, and DJI currently has two flagship level Enterprise drones that are both different in price, they're very different in size, but they're built to accomplish the same tasks. These drones of course are the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced and the DJI M300. Now comparing these drones might seem almost stupid because they are so vastly different in price. Like if we looked at the specs on paper, the M300 is of course the better drone, but when you take everything into consideration from price to size to usability you understand that these two drones serve very different purposes. Like, I wouldn't say that either of these drones is necessarily better than the other because they're very different platforms built for people that have different needs. Like, if your job demands or favors portability, then you'll obviously go with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, but instead, if you're someone that needs the sheer power of the absolute best aerial platform that you can purchase, then you're gonna go with the M300. So, with that said, what I want to do in today's video is compare these two drones in a few different categories. We'll look at the aircraft itself, the camera, the features that each drone are equipped with, and then we'll wrap up by discussing which drone is best for certain situations to help you understand which is right for you. One more thing I quickly want to throw in here before we get started. I think you're going to be very surprised at how well the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced holds up, especially when viewing the specs side by side on paper. Okay. Now let's get into the video. So obviously the aircraft body itself is by far the biggest difference here as the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced is small and the M300 is big. I'll put the official weight and dimensions up here on the screen for specifics, but showing them side by side with a person standing behind them should give you an idea of the massive size difference. Now because the size difference is so great between these two drones, I think it's probably one of the largest deciding factors that comes into play when someone is deciding which platform is right for them. The smaller Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced or the larger M300 to that and probably the price because they are definitely different in that regard as well. So for example, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced is really easy to transport. Absolutely everything that you need fits inside of this small case. The drone, the attachments, the remote, extra batteries. The M300 on the other hand requires a massive case that needs to be wheeled around and if you want to bring extra batteries, which I'm almost positive that you will need regardless of your situation, then you're looking at another case to cart them around. The setup time is also so vastly different between these two drones. I mean, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, you can just kind of unfold it, take the gimbal guard off, turn it on, and then you're good to go. This process takes 30 seconds, if that. The M300 instead requires assembly out of the case from unfolding the arms to attaching the landing gear and mounting the batteries, all of which is a process that can take well over five minutes. With that larger size though, the M300 is able to pack a lot of sensors inside of the body. We have a total of 24 sensors with two time of flight infrared sensors and two vision sensors on each and every side. There's also four auxiliary lights, two light beacons, a forward facing FPV camera, and you've got the ability to mount up to three payloads. So three different cameras on this drone. The M300 also uses two batteries, so there's a higher level of redundancy, and you have the ability to hot swap them on the ground for minimal downtime in between flights. To continue to add to its abilities, it's also IP45 water resistant, whereas the Mavic does not have any rating at all. The final thing that I think is really important to mention about the M300 as an aircraft is its high level of redundancy. So for every potential failure point, there's something put in place to act as a backup, making it one of the safest drones that I've ever flown. Just to give you a little taste of how safe the M300 is, here is an entire list of all of the redundancy built into the aircraft. So all of the major sensors and flight critical components have some sort of fallback option. Take the three propeller emergency landing, for example. If one of the motors fails on this drone, you still have the ability to land it, which is truly incredible. See, that's the power of having more space to work with on your drone. You're able to fit things into it that you simply couldn't into a smaller drone like the Mavic's airframe that's just a small little foldable drone. Now look, we do have true obstacle avoidance in the front, back, and bottom of the drone with single sensors on the side here and an infrared sensor on the top. So this isn't true omnidirectional obstacle avoidance like we get on the M300. It also has a dual set of auxiliary LEDs on the bottom of the drone with the ability to add a single LED beacon on the top through the attachment system. But all of this pales in comparison to the 24 sensors and six lights on the M300, including a slew 
slew of other features. Now let's move on here and talk about aircraft specs because even though there's a huge difference in size, both of them are still extremely capable. In each of these categories, the M300 takes the lead, but the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced is right on its heels. I would even go as far as saying that the difference is negligible in certain situations. For example, I've had trouble reaching that maximum speed of 52 miles per hour with the M300. The flight time is drastically decreased when adding a payload, so for me, I'm seeing about 35 minutes with the H20T camera mounted, and the range from the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced honestly is all that you need in most situations. The transmission signal on both of these drones is fantastic, giving you a solid video feed from the drone with low latency and responsive controls. You know, even though when we look on paper at the specs, the M300 has a slight edge in basically every single category, I think that this is actually where the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced starts to gain some steam and starts to play catch up because even though the M300 as an aircraft features so many more sensors and so many more lights and so much more hardware inside, I think that the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced is just as capable of a drone when it comes to speed and range and flight control. I mean, in my mind, the Mavic 2 is actually a little bit more nimble of a platform than the M300. 300 because it's smaller, it can get into tighter spaces, I feel less uh, worried about potentially crashing something this small instead of like a massive M300. So the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced again has its benefits over the M300 despite it having better specs. Again, these two drones are different platforms built for different types of people based on their needs. Okay, moving on from the specs, I now want to get into cameras and this situation is a little bit tr uh, tough because the M300 has so many different payloads. It has different cameras that can attach underneath, whereas the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced just has a fixed camera. But you could say that that is definitely a win for the M300 because it has so much more flexibility and that you can attach different payloads. Now, at the time of recording this video, there are six different camera options, six different payload options available for the M300 that are made by DJI. There's also the option to mount third-party payloads for specific missions in specific fields, but the six that DJI offer should be enough to cover a wide range of jobs that you need to complete with your drone. Remember, there's also various different ways to mount these payloads, so you can fly with two mounted side by side hung underneath of the drone, and you can also mount one on the top side of the drone. Now, while we're on this topic of payloads, I should mention that the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced does have an attachment system where you can add an LED spotlight, you can add a light beacon, or you can add a speaker onto the top. They mount in by two screw points, and then you also have a micro USB port that transfers power from the drone to the attachment. There's also an extra add-on RTK module if you want to purchase that separately and then add that to your kit. But just know that all these attachments are available for the M300 and all those attachments are better in basically every way. I mean, for example, the light beacon, that's an extra attachment here on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, is built in to the M300 and it has two of them, one on the top and one on the bottom. Now, the speaker and the uh, spotlight are third-party accessories. So remember, there are third-party companies making accessories for the M300. But that's the great thing about that platform is that you have a lot of different options to choose from. Now, getting back to cameras here, for the sake of this video, Video, I'll be comparing the built-in camera on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced to the H20T camera that was built specifically for the Matrice 300. And the reason I chose these two cameras to compare is because both of them can capture visual images and thermal images. So even though they are much different in size, they're both very alike in terms of their capabilities. Now I want to begin by looking at both of the thermal cameras simply because they basically have the same exact specs. They both shoot photos and videos in the same resolution. The refresh rate is the same at 30 hertz. They have the ability to zoom in digitally and have the same color palette options. The only real difference between these cameras is that the field of view or the lens on the thermal camera of the M300 is a little bit tighter, so it's a little bit more zoomed in than the Mavic 2 Enterprise's thermal camera. This means that if you were to hover both drones in the same exact spot, the subject that you're looking at will appear closer to the camera on the M300 than on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. To help you better understand this difference in focal length, here is a thermal image captured from the H20T on the M300. 300. It fits the entire building in the frame just like I was trying to do. Now, if I fly the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced from the same spot, the building looks much further away because of that difference in focal length. The reason behind this is because DJI wanted the focal length of both cameras to match. So, for example, when we switch between the cameras on the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, the framing of each camera is more or less the same. This is also true on the H20T 
with the zoom camera when at 2x optical zoom. It's the same focal length as the thermal camera, producing a similar looking image, whereas the wide camera has a much wider focal length. Now, I wouldn't say that this is necessarily a good or bad thing for either of these drones. Like, I can't really give one of them a winning check mark in the thermal category because both of them shoot very high resolution photos and videos for being a thermal camera, and that at the end of the day is what is really important. Now, what would I prefer, and maybe what would you prefer? Probably the tighter focal length, in my opinion, because in order to get the same level of resolution and fit the same amount in the frame, I can fly the M300 further away from what, what it is that I'm looking at. So let's say I'm inspecting an AC unit on top of a roof. I can fly further away from that AC unit and get the same image that I would with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, and I'd have to fly a little bit closer using this drone with the wider field of view. So again, is there one that's necessarily better than the other? Not really, but I'd say that I'd prefer the H20T camera because of the tighter focal length. Now, regardless, as I said, the resolution is really one of the most important things to look at, and both of these cameras can capture photos and videos at 640 pixels by 512 pixels. They both also have that 30 hertz refresh rate, so your live feed will look smooth and the videos that you capture will also be smooth. Basically, they are captured in 30 frames per second, and that is a huge plus. Now, as for image quality, looking at these photos, and videos actually reveals that the thermal camera on the H20T produces a sharper looking image. Despite these cameras having a similar pixel count, you can tell that the H20T has a much cleaner looking image, showing more definition in certain areas like the trees and edges of objects. Now this difference is definitely small, like both of these cameras are equally capable of capturing high quality images for inspection purposes and for search and rescue or law enforcement situations. I just think that the H20T is slightly sharper. Now jumping into to the visual sensors on both of these cameras. This is where the M300 starts to pull away with the lead, but before we get too far ahead of ourselves, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced camera actually has a couple of tricks up its sleeve that makes it better in a couple of different ways. So the H20T here has two different visual cameras. One is labeled as a wide lens and the other is labeled as a zoom lens. The Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, on the other hand, has one visual camera and tries to accomplish the zoom aspect through digital cropping in camera. Here's where things get interesting though because as a wide camera, the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced totally blows the H20T's camera out of the water. It can shoot photos and videos that have four times the resolution, so 48 megapixels instead of 12 megapixels, and 4K video instead of 1080p video. Now, I've mentioned this in a few of my previous videos about the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, as well as the Mavic Air 2, as both of them essentially have the same specs with their half-inch sensor. They both use very similar color cameras. So this is a quad Bayer sensor that effectively takes the 12 megapixels and splits them into four different sections, thus giving you a higher level of detail. You take 12 times four, and that gives you 48 megapixels. When we look at the specs of the H20T's zoom camera though, things begin to lean in favor of the M300. The megapixel count is increased to 20 megapixels, and finally we can capture 4K video. The zoom is also way more powerful, so with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced, we can zoom in up to 32 times, but it is entirely digital, which means the further you zoom, the further the quality is going to be degraded. It still gets the job done, and is surprisingly clear when zoomed all the way in to 32 times, thanks to that quad bear sensor that I mentioned and its capability to capture higher resolution images. The H20T, on the other hand, is able to zoom in 23 times optically, so there's absolutely no loss in quality, and then you get to zoom in up to 200 times digitally, which lets you see impossibly far away. It gets a little bit hard to control when zoomed all the way in, but nonetheless, the clarity is there to see far away in great detail. Now look, overall, I'd be nitpicking by saying that there is anything wrong with either of these camera systems. They both capture high quality photos and videos videos that are very suitable for inspections, search and rescue missions, law enforcement situations, fire management, and really anything else that you would need to do with either of these drones. The Pilot app makes it really easy to switch between cameras on the fly and view multiple cameras at once. I'll leave some comparison sample images available for you to download in the description so that you can look at these images from all of the different cameras if this is what you plan on making your decision on in terms of which drone is right for you. And with that, we are now jumping into our final comparison in our final category, which is software, the feature set that comes in the M300 and the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. And this 
is really where the M300 starts to take the lead because of all of the cool extra technology built inside of the drone. DJI was able to give the M300 an advanced feature set that the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced just doesn't have. Now, I have tirelessly covered these features in other videos, so forgive me if I speed through this section, but some of the cool things that the M300 can do is Smart Track, which automatically tracks and locates subjects. It has an upgraded version of waypoints and a live mission recording function that remembers specific aircraft movements to be replayed again. It has the ability to use AI when photographing the same subject over and over again to allow the drone to properly frame the shot every time. It has the ability to stitch multiple photos close together to make one high resolution image. You can also connect to DJI Flight Hub to relay information instantly to ground teams. It even has a laser rangefinder built into the H20 and H20T cameras to precisely measure the distance from the drone to what it is that you are currently pointing the camera at. So hopefully now that we have gone over all of that information, you as a person who might be looking to purchase the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced or the M300 is equipped to make a better decision. Now look, I don't think that there's a clear winner here. Again, both of these platforms are designed for very different people and very different use cases in mind. One is very portable, while the other is very big, but very feature rich. Now, while the size is definitely one of the biggest differences, as I've mentioned, the price tag is also very different. So one Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced retails for $6,900, whereas a M300 outfitted with a H20T camera retails for $25,500. So that means that you could then purchase three and a half Mavic 2 Enterprise advances for the price of one M300 and potentially outfit three different operators with drones instead of buying one M300. Now look, don't let that deter you from picking up the M300. If that is the platform that you need, then you should definitely go for it because quite frankly, it is one of the best drones that I've ever flown for any situation you could potentially put it in. Anyway, guys, with that, I hope that you enjoyed the video. Let me know your thoughts on both of these drones, the M300 and the Mavic 2 Enterprise Advanced. If you fly either of them, do you kind of wish you went with the other one for any specific reasons? Let me know in the comment section. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace. Mm -hmm.